بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس السلام علیکم آئی ایم احمد ممتاز مستیسن یور ٹیچر فار سی ایس سی ون فور ون انٹروڈکشن ٹو کمپیوٹر پروگرامنگ وی آر اسٹڈنگ فنکشنس ان دا لاسٹ لیکچر وی ٹاک اباؤٹ نمبر آف کانسیپٹس ریلیٹڈ ٹو دا فنکشنس وی ول کنٹینیو ود دا سیم ٹاپک ٹوڈے بٹ بفور آئی انٹروڈیوس سم نیو کانسیپٹس Let's have a very quick revision regarding the concepts that we discussed in the last lecture. We said a function is a self-contained block of statements that perform coherent task of any kind. Or function groups a number of C programs valid statements together and we call it as a module, a unit or a function and we give it a name. This unit or module can then be invoked at any place at any number of time as per our requirement. Certainly it helps us saving lot of time and effort by calling the same function again and again in different places of our project or of in our main program. Quick syntax. We need to declare a function in the beginning and we call it as function declaration. It has got another name and that is prototyping a function. What does it mean? We introduce the function to the system, to the compiler. We educate the compiler with the function. What does it mean? It means that we tell the compiler that what is the name of the function, what is the return type of this function, that is what type of data this function is supposed to return, then the argument list parameter list. The parameter list contains three concepts. Number one, the type of parameters. Number two, the names of the parameters. And number three, the order of these parameters. Or the function may not require any parameter. We call it as a void list or we can skip that. Then the next concept is that in a function or in a main program, we can call that particular function. So we can call a function at any place. For example, is this in this particular example, this is the name of our function, star line. This is called the function declaration. This star line is basically the calling of a function. We can call it as many times as we like. So we have called it twice here and here. Then there is another function which is called get CHE and uh, that is also a built-in function that is available in the library, library that is provided with the C compiler. Then comes this which is called the definition of a function. Definition of a function and in the definition of a function is in line in the uh, what we call it as the declaration. The definition should match the type of declaration here. So this was the declaration, void is the return, means function does not return anything. Same declaration is here, then the name of the function, same name of the function, but be careful. Here is a semicolon. And this particular semicolon indicate that this is just the declaration. And we don't use this semicolon here because this is the definition which starts from here and ends with the curly bracket. So these are the quick revision of the concepts that we talked about. So the concepts that we discussed are that in C++ you must declare every identifier before it can be used. Now the identifier could be a variable name or identifier could be a function. So if you are defining a function, if you are using a function, you must 
provide the name of the function and name of the function follows the same rule as that of defining the variable name a function declaration announces to the compiler the name of the function the data type of the functions return value and the argument waste and this declaration of a function is also known as function prototype or prototyping a function then we talked about the function calls that statement transfers the control from the calling program to the card function and this is called calling of a function to call a function we use its name as a statement as a valid statement anywhere in our main program along with the list of arguments the list of arguments used by a calling program or used by uh, used to call a particular function is called the actual argument whereas the arguments which are used to define a function is called a formal arguments a function call in a main program results in the execution of the body of the function that you have defined in the definition of a function and in the definition of a function quickly should match the declarator should have the function return type if the function does not return anything it should be void and if you skip this particular data type then it is a default data type and what is default data type you know that it is by default integer so if you skip the return data type the system assumes that the return data type is an integer but if the function does not return any data type then you should not skip the definition of the return data type in that case you are bound to use the data type which is called void and void means nothing that is the function does not return anything or the function returns nothing then the name of the function then the parameter list then the statements and this definition starts from this curly brackets and ends to this particular curly brackets okay we can eliminate uh, eliminate the declaration but then how we can educate the compiler in that particular case we are required to provide the definition of the function before its use so if you want to use your function in your main program at that particular case you are bound to provide the definition before the main program okay or the main function you can do that after the main function but in that case you are required to provide the prototype or the declaration of your function but the second approach here is that if you want Uh, to uh, skip the declaration of a function then you are bound to provide the complete definition of a function before it is used or complete definition of a function comprises wohi tamam cheeze that we use it in the declaration means the return data type the name of the function the argument waste and then the body of the function as well okay we add new concepts also and what are these concepts that we can pass constants as an arguments in the previous examples i have used the variables as an arguments in this particular example this first line is basically the prototyping of a function which is void star line character int this is called function declaration and here it is the definition and uh, something you say that in the declaration in the prototype we don't use the variable name we just use the data type for example character matches with this character integer and int matches with this one so at the time of the declaration and at the time of the prototyping we are not required to provide the variable names why because we don't need the variables at that particular time the variables are assigned or allocated or 
when we talk about variables, what does it mean? The memory allocation. So the memory allocation is allocated to a function when that particular function comes to life, means when that particular is function is executed. So at that time, the variable name is required because the memory is allocated here when this function is called. So we can provide the prototype definition that we can call instead of using the variable we can pass on this star line we can pass on a character is steric and uh, the integer value at 30 so i've called this function twice here with this steric and 30 and here with this plus sign and 30. so what we'll do uh, this function when we call this function, the control is transferred back here, somewhere in this uh, body of the loop here. It will draw a line. How it will draw a line? It will print this character. How many times? It will print this character, this the second 30, and 30 is used here as an N, and N we are using here. Okay, so it will draw a line means this for loop is executed 30 times and this for loop when it will execute 30 times the body of the statement C out CH will be executed 30 times mean this character will be printed 30 times. So when you print a character 30 times it will print a line. Okay, obviously when there will be 30 characters printed, so in a particular line, so it's mean that a line is printed using that particular character. Then we print the uh, phrase hello world and after hello world, now you are calling the same function, but this time you are passing the argument, constant arguments, not a variable and this constant is plus. You can pass any, any valid uh, uh, character to the uh, calling uh, function and that character will be used to depict or print a particular line along with the number of the size of the line the number of time this character should be printed okay so in this particular example we have learned that we can call the function by passing the constants not the and these constants are the arguments so instead of passing the arguments as variables, we have learned that we can call a particular function using the constant values. This we uh, already know and uh, I've used this example uh, many times, uh, not this particular example, but the concept of passing the variables. Here the prototyping is indicating that we will pass three integer to this particular function and uh, then we have not provided the uh, definition here. Definition is here integer x, y and z and there are three uh, variables that we have defined here a, b, c and sum. We read the values through from keyboard and once we read the value from uh, keyboard this a b and c the data is there then we calculate the sum by passing these three variable as an argument in the previous example we passed on constants as an arguments and here i'm just quickly revising for you that we are passing the three variable a b and c as an arguments and these three and these arguments we call it as the actual arguments whereas integer x integer y integer z are the are called yes they are called the formal arguments these are called the actual arguments and these are called the formal arguments so these formal arguments will receive the data receive the copy of the data a will be received by x b will be received by y and c will be received by z and then you compute the result and then you return the value of the result back to the calling program where this value is printed here okay and this we use it just to stay uh, within the output of the window you remember that in our uh, last demonstration instead of using this uh, concept of get che that is a function that reads a character from the keyboard so when you call this function it means that you are supposed to enter any particular character from the keyboard but now 
in C language, we have got a better option and that better option is basically the uh, system call and you say system within the parenthesis pause. So it automatically gives you a message, press any key to continue. So as soon as you press any key, the output window is lost. But in this program, we have used the function get CHE to done the same job. Then the returning value from the function. When a function completes the execution, it can return a single value to the calling program. Usually this return value consists of an answer to the problem. Answer to the problem that was requested to solve by the calling program to the calling function. When a function returns a value, the data type of this value must be specified. If you are expecting from a function to give you certain result back or give you certain output, remember this output doesn't mean that you should print the value to the screen or print the value on the screen. Rather, you are expecting the function to return a value that you want to print it in your calling program, not in the call function. So you should always include a function return type in the function declaration. If you don't use, you know that we have already said by default the return type is integer and if you skip means that you don't want to get any value from the function then you are required to use void. Dear students, we have learned to pass the arguments to a function in two different ways. Passing the argument to a function as a constant and passing the arguments to a function as the ref uh, as sorry variables. So when you call a particular function by passing the variable this is called call by value okay or constant. When you pass the uh, argument as variable or constant this is called call by value. So, when you call a function by using call by value, this means that you are passing the data through variables or through constant. We can also call a function by calling the, uh, uh, by call by reference. What does it mean? That we need to that. So, we can also define functions that are passed a reference of a variable. Instead of passing the name of a variable, you can pass the reference of a variable. What does it mean? Really, we should know that. This is called call by reference and the function can change the caller variables, sorry, the function can change uh, caller variables directly. What does it mean? I will like to explain it further. That means a reference variable is an alternative name for a variable. Just now, you have a nickname. Ho sakta na? One, you got a name. For example, you have got a name Arsalan and your nickname might be Papu. Okay? Or something else. So, you can assign any other name to a person who has already have uh, already has a name. Similarly, we can assign any shortcut name to the variable. Now, what's the purpose and what's the use that we will discuss it in the future lectures. But here, just I would like to communicate to you that we can use an alternative name to the variable or we can assign an alternative name to a variable which is called a reference. So a reference variable must be initialized to reference another variable. A reference variable must be initialized to reference another variable. When you are declaring a reference variable then obviously you are supposed to provide the address of that particular variable so that that address should be picked up by the reference variable. Just now, you have to tell me that nickname is this person or this Similarly, here you are required to provide that this reference jo hai, that you have defined belongs to which variable. Once the reference is initialized, then you can treat the reference just like the name of the variable. Just like you have to 
کسی کو اگر آپ نے ارسلان کہنا ہے تو آپ ارسلان کہہ گئے اور اگر آپ نے اس کو پپو کہنا ہے تو آپ اسے پپو کہہ سکتے ہیں ریفرنس آرکومنٹس اب سیم کانسیپٹ بٹ آئی وڈ لائک ٹو یوز اٹ ان دی فنکشن پاسنگ آرگومنٹس بائی ریفرنس از اے میکینزم ان ویچ دی ریفرنس ٹو دی اوریجنل ویریبل ان دا کالنگ پروگرام از پاس ٹو دا فنکشن بات سمجھ میں آئی کہ کالنگ پروگرام میں انسٹیڈ آف یو پاسنگ دی آرگومنٹس ایز ویریبل اور ایز کانسٹینٹس وی آر پاسنگ دس پرٹیکولر ریفرنس وین آرگومنٹس آر پاس بائی ویلیو دی کار فنکشن کریٹس اے نیو ویریبل آف ڈیٹ پرٹیکولر ڈیٹا ٹائپ اینڈ کاپیز دی آرگومنٹ ان ٹو ڈیٹ پرٹیکولر ویریبل پلیز جسٹ کانسنٹریٹ ہم یہ بتانے کی کوشش کر رہے ہیں کہ جب ہم آرگومنٹ کو پاس آن کرتے ہیں ایز اے ویلیو ایسی صورت میں فنکشن جو ہے وہ اس فارمل آرگومنٹس کو جو ہے یوز کرتا ہے ٹو ریسیو دی ایکچوئل آرگومنٹس یعنی کہ اس کی کاپی جو ہے ایکچوئل آرگومنٹس کی کاپی جو ہے فارمل آرگومنٹس جو ہے وہ ریسیو کرتے ہیں اس کا کیا مطلب ہوا کہ جو ویریبل نیم آپ نے یوز کیے تھے ایز این ایکچوئل آرگومنٹس کے طور پر اس کی کاپی جو ہے وہ ایک فنکشن جو ہے جو اس کو ریسیو کرتا ہے فارمل آرگومنٹس کے اندر وہ ان ویریبلس کے اندر اس کی کاپی کو ریسیو کرتا ہے دس از ویری 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 امپورٹنٹ بٹ وین یو پاس آن آ ریفرنس ایز این آرگومنٹ وٹ ہیپنس An important advantage of passing reference argument is that the function can access the actual variable in the calling program. Difference سمجھ میں آیا اس کا مطلب یہ ہوا کہ وہ جس ویریبل کا آپ نے ریفرنس پاس کیا تھا اس ویریبل کا آپ نے ایڈریس پاس کیا تھا نو انسٹیڈ آف ریسیونگ دا ڈیٹا ان سم ادر ویریبلس ہیئر یو ول ریسیو دی ایگزیکٹ لوکیشن آف دوز ویریبل جن کا آپ نے ریفرنس پاس آن کیا تھا تو اس کا مطلب ہے کہ اب جتنی بھی آپ مینوپلیشن کریں گے وہ انہی ایگزیکٹ لوکیشن کے اوپر کی جائے گی جو آپ کے ایکچوئل آرگومنٹس ہیں یعنی کہ جو آپ کے ایکچوئل آرگومنٹس آپ نے پاس کیے ہیں ٹو آ کالنگ فنکشن بائی کالنگ بائی ریفرنس اس کا ایڈریس آپ نے کالنگ فنکشن کو پاس آن کر دیا اب جتنی بھی مینوپلیشن فنکشن کرے گا وہ ان ایکچوئل ویریبلس پر کرے گا سو اٹس ویری انٹیلیجنٹ اس کا ایڈوانٹیج کیا ہوا ذرا سوچیں آپ آئی ول ایکسپلین یو ان فیو منٹس سو وین دا فنکشن از کالڈ دی ریفرنس آرگومنٹس اینڈ دا ویریبل نیم ان دا کالنگ فنکشن بیکم سنانیمس فار دی سیم لوکیشن ان دا میموری ایکچوئل ویریبل کی ایکسیس جو ہے وہ آپ کو مل رہی ہے سو وی کین اونلی یوز دس ویریبل وین وی آر پاسنگ آرگومنٹس بائی ریفرنس ویئر ایز وی کین یوز دا ویریبل ایز ویل ایز کانسٹینٹس وین دے آر پاس بائی دی ویلیو اور پاس بائی دی کالنگ بائی ویلیو اب اس کا ایک ایڈوانٹیج جو میں نے آپ سے کہا سوچیں کیا ہوگا ایڈوانٹیج آبویسلی یو کین ریٹرن ون سنگل ویلیو فرام آ فنکشن لیکن جب آپ آرگومنٹ پاس کر رہے ہیں آرگومنٹ کا ریفرنس پاس کر رہے ہیں تو ان آرگومنٹس کی اپڈیٹڈ ویلیو جو ہے وہ بھی پاس آن ہو رہی ہے دس از دا موسٹ امپورٹنٹ کانسیپٹ اینڈ ایڈوانٹیج آف کالنگ بائی ریفرنس تھنک اباؤٹ اٹ کہ کیونکہ یو آر پاسنگ دی ایڈریس سنس یو آر پاسنگ دی ایڈریس ٹو دا کالنگ فنکشن تو کالنگ فنکشن جو ہے اٹ مینوپلیٹس دا ڈیٹا وین دا کالنگ فنکشن مینوپلیٹس دا ڈیٹا مینس کہ ان ویریبلس کا ڈیٹا بھی آپ اپڈیٹ کر سکتے ہیں سو دی اپڈیٹڈ ویریبلس آر آلسو اویلیبل ٹو دا کالنگ پروگرام تو ویلیو تو آپ ایک ہی ریٹرن کر سکتے ہیں لیکن جو ڈیٹا اپڈیشن ہے اس کے تھرو بھی آپ ملٹیپل ڈیٹا آئٹمس ریٹرن کر سکتے ہیں مینس کہ وہ جو آرگومنٹس کی اپڈیٹڈ ویلیو بھی ریٹرن کر سکتے ہیں When you are passing the arguments by value, اس میں ویلیو ریٹرن نہیں ہوتی 
उसमें सिर्फ जस्ट वन सिंगल डेटा टाइप इज रिटर्न थ्रू रिटर्न स्टेटमेंट बट वेन यू पास इट बाय रेफरेंस सो इन दैट केस यू पास द एक्चुअल एड्रेस ऑफ द वेरिएबल्स एक्चुअल आर्गूमेंट्स ऑफ द वेरिएबल का एड्रेस फंक्शन को पास ऑन करते हैं सो इन दैट केस यू ऑल्सो रिसीव द अपडेटेड वैल्यू ऑफ दैट पर्टिकुलर आर्गूमेंट ओके आई होप आई मेट यू अंडरस्टैंड बट आई यूज सर्टन एग्जाम्पल्स ऑल्सो टू एजरबेट इट फर्दर इन पासिंग आर्गूमेंट विद ए वैल्यू इम्प्लिसिड टाइप कन्वर्जन अकर्स इफ द मैच आइटम्स हैव डिफरेंट डेटा टाइप्स अब टाइप uh, कन्वर्जन जो है वी विल डिस्कस इट इन डिटेल सेपरेटली लेकिन इफ इट इज एन इंटीजर एंड यू आर पासिंग इट टू आई थिंक आई हैव गिवन एन एग्जांपल आल्सो दैट वी पास द इंटीजर वैल्यू टू अ डबल वैल्यू इट इज ऑटोमेटिकली कन्वर्टेड फ्रॉम इंटीजर टू डबल बट इन एन अदर वैक्चर आई विल एक्सप्लिसिटली डिफाइन वट इज द टाइप कन्वर्जन एंड वट इज कार्ड द टाइप कास्टिंग सो जस्ट यहां पर उसको टच करना था एंड वेटर ऑन आई एक्सप्लेन इट टू यू फर्दर सो कॉलिंग बाय रेफरेंस नाउ यू कैन डिक्लेयर रेफरेंस वेरिएबल डेट शुड बी प्रोसीडेड विद द वेरिएबल नेम विद एन एम्परसेंट साइन इसको एज एन एड्रेस ऑपरेटर के तौर पर यूज करते हैं ये एक जगह हमने और भी यूज किया था डू यू रिमेंबर डेट जस्ट जस्ट ट्राई टू रिमेंबर Yes, in the स्कैन एफ फंक्शन हमने इस एड्रेस ऑपरेटर को यूज किया था टू पास ऑन द एड्रेस ऑफ वेरिएबल टू द स्कैन एफ फंक्शन सो डैट के जो डेटा आप रीड करें दो तीन चार वेरिएबल्स में डेटा रीड करें वो डेटा आपके पास अवेलेबल हो सो so, ये काम तो हम पहले कर चुके हैं स्कैन एफ को हम एड्रेस ऑफ ए एड्रेस ऑफ बी एड्रेस ऑफ सी पास ऑन करते हैं कीबोर्ड से हमने डेटा एंटर किया ए का बी का सी का एंड ऑल ए बी सी द डेटा इज अवेलेबल इन ओवर कार्विंग प्रोग्राम ओके सो दिस इज अ कॉन्सेप्ट एट वी हैव ऑलरेडी बीन यूजिंग इट इन द स्कैन एफ फंक्शन बट एट दैट टाइम वी डिड नॉट नो द कॉन्सेप्ट but now i have explained the same concept that means calling by reference that enable you to access the actual variables actual variables actual arguments that were passed as an argument to a function so these are the three examples humne salary ke sath bhi ampersand use kar liya character ke sath bhi use kar liya aur iske sath bhi use kar liya and now if i can just simply use a statement scan f percent d for this percent f for this and percent c for this then it becomes the same thing that we discuss in the previous lectures starting lectures mein humne use kiya tha so let us see exclusively that how can we pass on the uh, address means how can we perform the calling by reference calling by reference ke liye first of all in the prototype you need to define integer ampersand sign means that you want to use this function by calling by reference same old main integer x abc of temp abc of x when you pass the temp to the function abc it picks up the address of temperature tem p in address of t so now the t is the nickname of temperature temp ye kaise hua aapne pass on kiya is variable ko yahan par aapne iska address pick kiya by providing the person variable ye ek nickname define kiya aapne t temp is t so t is the nickname of temp so now when you call this function the variable so temp will be received in t but the same variable is called address will be picked up by t so now you enter the data when you enter the data you are not returning anything aapne is program mein se koi cheez return nahi ki hai and yet this temp is printed here jo data is function ne read kiya tha yahan par through c in t ke andar kyunki wo t nickname tha iska temp ka you have not returned 
that value, but that yet the value is available in the calling fun calling program. Yeah, calling program humara konsa hai main. So without returning the value, yet you have returned a value to the calling function or calling program. Similarly, you passed on x. X ki koi value nahi hai. You have simply passed on a variable x. Here you have read the data from the keyboard, put it there. But since this ampersand t is the nickname of x, nickname of any variable it will receive means it will have the address of any variable it will receive. So means it will have an access to every variable which is passed on to this particular program. So that means that something very powerful that we can the function calling and that is called call by reference. Okay. The same example. Here we have used integer ampersand x and the parameter is a particular reference and now we said x is equal to x plus 10. Whatever the data it will pass on, it will add 10 to that and that's why the name of the function we have given it as add 10. Okay, let's take a useful example. Means, talk about what we can achieve by using the reference, calling by reference. Suppose we want to swap the contents of x with contents of y. So in this particular example, we have done that. We have declared void swap integer x and integer y. When we say void swap, void swap ka matlab hai ke the function swap does not return anything. But yet this function is doing something very interesting for us. This function is interchanging the contents of the two containers, two variables. X ke jo contents hain, wo y mein ja rahe hain, aur y ke contents hain, wo x mein ha rahe hain. So, without returning the variable type or the data types, we are asking a function to do this job for us. Aur uske contents ho hum swap kar rahe hain. Whenever we are required to perform the swapping, when you want to transfer the contents of bucket A from the contents of the bucket B, Suppose you have got two buckets, on two buckets can there either you have uh, one has got uh, milk and the second one bucket is uh, got uh, some other drink or maybe have uh, water. Now if you want to interchange the contents of bucket A with contents of bucket B, you are required another bucket. आपको एक तीसरी बकेट की जरूरत पेश आएगी आप इस तरीके से इसके बगैर आप दोनों के कंटेंट चेंज नहीं करेंगे सो दैट थर्ड बकेट हम उसको नाम देते हैं टेम्प का सो द थर्ड बकेट इज बेसिकली द टेम्प सो वी फर्स्ट पोर द कंटेंट्स ऑफ बकेट एक्स इनटू द टेम्प बकेट इट्स मीन दैट दिस बकेट इज नाउ एम्प्टी now we can pour the content of y into x makes y empty and then we can pour the content that we have placed in the third bucket into y. So what we have done basically we have interchanged the content of x with contents of y. If x contained milk and y contained water in the beginning after performing this particular task now x will contain a water and y will contain a milk or vice versa. Calling by default argument. Students, we have learned calling by value or calling by value may have learned kiya. calling by uh, the constants or calling by variable name. We have constants ke through bhi function ko call kiya. Remember, steric or plus were the constants that we passed on to our star line function. So that was the example of calling uh, the calling by value or calling by constants. Or humne pir int a, int b or int c ke andar humne examples dekhi calling by value. Then we talked about calling by 
reference and I have given you few examples, two examples in which I explained you how can we pass on the argument as calling by reference. Ek aur cheez hai, jisko hum kehte hai, calling by default argument. This is also very powerful feature available to us and we can make use of this feature very uh, usefully. What is that? Default arguments. A function can be called without specifying all its argument. And interesting. We can call a function even without passing the arguments to that particular function. This means that we should have some default values associated with that particular function. And if we do not pass on any argument to that particular function or we skip any argument of any particular function, in that case, the default value should be utilized as the passing argument by the calling function. So, for this purpose, function declaration must provide default value for those arguments that are not specified. आपको याद है फंक्शन डिक्लेरेशन में तो आई वुड लाइक टू गो बैक क्विकली किसी फंक्शन डिक्लेरेशन की बात करते मे बी मे बी यस दिस इज फंक्शन डिक्लेरेशन नॉट एसोसिएटेड विद एनीथिंग इट इज जस्ट दी डेटा टाइप लिस्ट ऑफ आर्गुमेंट मींस के डेटा टाइप फर्स्ट वन विल बी द इंटीजर सेकंड वन विल बी द इंटीजर थर्ड वन इज विल बी द इंटीजर एंड नो डिफॉल्ट वैल्यू इज असाइंड बट हियर I say that we can use it default argument and this is the example. Now the function declaration in this particular example the function declaration says character which is equal to this character and integer is equal to 45. So this declaration now contains two default values and these two default values will be used where in the first example when no value is passed on then the character will be used as hash sign and the integer will be used as 45 okay then we print this message here in this particular example since we are not passing out the uh, passing uh, the second argument integer argument we are only passing the first argument so we are passing the character is at mark or at sign and we are not passing the integer so it will use instead of this it will use this particular character and in, for the second argument it will use 45 here that is another function call and in the third function call we can override both the default values and we have override here hash sign as well as we have override here the number 45 ki jaga humne override karke usko 30 kar diya aur character ki jaga humne hash sign use kar liya okay so the function declaration contains the default values but here the function definition may हम अब डिफॉल्ट वैल्यू को यहां पे रिपीट नहीं करेंगे रादर वी प्रोवाइड दीज टू फॉर्मल आर्गुमेंट हेयर एंड इफ नो आर्गुमेंट्स आर पास्ड ऑन देन द डिक्लेरेशन के केस में दिस इज द डिक्लेरेशन व्हिच इज द डिफॉल्ट डिक्लेरेशन दैट मींस के हैश विल बी इन हेयर एंड 45 विल बी हेयर बट हेयर वी विल नॉट यूज इट एंड देन वी विल प्रोवाइड दिस बॉडी ऑफ द डेफिनेशन ऑफ द फंक्शन हेयर वी वांट टू प्रिंट द इंट 45 times here for this particular function the character a line print karega hash sign say and this character will be printed 45 times because no argument has been passed through the calling function so default value will be used here what will it will use 45 times the character will be printed but this time not the hash sign this time it will be the at mark sign will be printed 45 times the third the same function this time the character will be printed dollar sign but not 45 times it will be printed 30 times or ye loop jo hai ye hai yahan par koi definition nahi thi to n ki value default thi 45 yahan par 
एन की वैल्यू हमने प्रोवाइड की थर्टी सो देन इट इज इंस्टेड ऑफ फोर्टी फाइव इट बी यूज एज ए थर्टी ओके सो है ना एक पावरफुल फीचर और डेट पावरफुल फीचर इज द डिफॉल्ट आर्गूमेंट एंड वेन आई विल डेमोस्ट्रेट ऑफ दिस एग्जाम्पल आई विल शो यू हाउ कैन बी यूज आई हैव ऑलरेडी डेमोस्ट्रेटेड हाउ कैन बी यूज इट बट प्रैक्टिकली आई विल डेमोस्ट्रेट इट ऑल्सो ओके स्टूडेंट्स we have gone through the examples where we have uh, uh, used the definition that has been provided by ourself or that has been provided by the definition function or the function definition by ourself but we also have the access to the library functions and one of the library function or the or the one of the library is a math library सो मैथ लाइब्रेरी में भी एक एग्जाम्पल देते हैं और उसको यूज करते हैं वट इज डैट आर एन डी रेंट दिस इज अ लाइब्रेरी फंक्शन फॉर द जनरेशन ऑफ रेंडम नंबर समाइम वी नीड ऑटोमेटिक जनरेशन ऑफ रेंडम नंबर कोई आइडिया कहां पे यूज हो सकती है यस इन द लॉटरी अगर आपने कोई एक लॉटरी का टिकट है एंड यू वॉन्ट के डैट डॉट रेंडम नंबर जो है वो उसको कंबाइन करके आप लॉटरी का नंबर जो है वो बताएं यानी कि आपकी लॉटरी जो है ऑटोमेटिकली जो है वो निकले मींस के नंबर ऑटोमेटिकली आए तो उसके लिए यू रिक्वायर दी रैंडम नंबर्स प्राइस पाउंड की लिस्ट वेयर यू यूज दी रैंडम नंबर्स अब वो रैंडम नंबर्स मैनुअल भी हो सकते हैं और दी रैंडम नंबर कुड बी जनरेटेड बाई दी कंप्यूटर एक तो होता है ना ड्रम के जरिए वो दे रोटेट एंड देन टेक आउट ऑफ अ क्यूब एंड डेट क्यूब इज कंसिडर्ड एज ए रैंडम क्यूब एंड देन दे कंबाइन दिस क्यूब एंड प्रोड्यूस दिस्ट ऑफ द प्राइस पाउंड बट दे कैन ऑल्सो आस द कंप्यूटर टू जनरेट द रैंडम नंबर दैट फेसिविटी इज अवेलेबल बाई डिफॉल्ट दिस फेसिविटी जनरेट्स द रैंडम नंबर सीक्वेंस फ्रॉम जीरो टू थ्री टू सेवन सिक्स सेवन ये डिफॉल्ट रूटीन है जो कि बड़े से बड़े इंटीजर नंबर थ्री टू सेवन सिक्स सेवन जो है साइंड इंटीजर जो है वो थ्री टू सेवन सिक्स सेवन है डियर स्टूडेंट्स आई ऑल्सो एट द टाइम जब मैं आपको एक्सप्लेन कर रहा हूँ टाइप कास्टिंग और टाइप uh, कन्वर्जन उस वक्त आई वुड ऑल्सो लाइक टू एक्सप्लेन यू दी दी डेटा टाइप्स और उनकी रेंजेज आई वुड ऑल्सो लाइक टू डिस्कस के डेटा टाइप की रेंज क्या है सो एट दिस स्टेज जस्ट बेयर विद मी के इंटीजर की जो रेंज है डिफॉल्ट रेंज फॉर दी साइन इंटीजर इज थ्री टू सेवन सिक्स सेवन है बट यू कैन ऑलवेज लिमिट दिस रेंज इफ यू वॉन्ट डेट योर रेंडम नंबर शुड बी जनरेटेड विद इन अ गिवन लिमिट सो इन दैट केस यू कैन यूज द मॉडुलस ऑपरेटर एंड आई शो यू हाउ कैन यूज दिस मॉडुलस ऑपरेटर ओके इन दिस पर्टिकुलर एग्जाम्पल इन दिस पर्टिकुलर एग्जाम्पल वी विल कॉल दिस रैंडम नंबर एंड दिस रैंडम नंबर इज आर रेंट दिस इज कॉल्ड एंड वी कॉल इट हंड्रेड टाइम्स बिकॉज हेयर आई एम रनिंग दिस पर्टिकुलर रूप फ्रॉम जीरो लेस देन इक्वल टू हंड्रेड इंक्रीमेंट आई एंड आर नम इज आर रेंट एंड देन वी प्रिंट दिस रैंडम नंबर सो वेरी सिंपल we can call the mathematical library function by simply providing the name of the function maine aapko kaha tha na aapko pata hona chahiye ki what a function does number 1 number 2 what a function requires as an input number 3 what the function returns aur chauthi baat maine aapse kaha tha ke how the function work is not your problem aapko ye nahi pata hona chahiye zaruri hai ये पता होना जरूरी नहीं है आपके लिए कि ये कैसे काम करता है लेकिन ये पता होना बहुत जरूरी है कि वट इज द नेम ऑफ द फंक्शन वट इज द रिक्वायरमेंट ऑफ द इनपुट आर्गूमेंट एंड वट द फंक्शन रिटर्न सो इस रैंडम फंक्शन के लिए इट फंक्शन रिटर्न एन इंटीजर वैल्यू एंड देर फोर वी हैव डिफाइंड इंट आर नम एज एन इंटीजर वैल्यू दिस रैंडम नंबर रिटर्न द इंटीजर डेट इज स्टोर्ड हेयर एंड देन वी कैन प्रिंट इट ओवर देयर okay in this example we would like k over random number should generate a sequence from uh, 0 to 101 or if i want from 0 to 100 then i can instead of 1 i can use 
hundred here. So then it will give you an output of the random numbers from zero to one hundred. Okay? How can we do that? ये random number जो generate करेगा, this random number will be divided with a hundred. Or whenever we divide a number with a hundred, the integer remainder could either be zero to ninety-nine, or zero to uh, ninety-nine if you are dividing it by uh, number uh, hundred. But if you want that uh, your number hundred should also be there. In that case, you will divide the number from hundred and uh, one. और 101 का जो इंटीजर रिमाइंडर आएगा वो आएगा जीरो से लेके 100 तक सो इफ यू वांट दैट दिस रैंडम नंबर जनरेटर शुड जनरेट द नंबर विद अ रेंज फ्रॉम जीरो टू 100 तो आप इसको 101 से डिवाइड करेंगे इंटीजर मॉड्यूलस और इंटीजर रिमाइंडर जीरो से 100 तक आएगा ओके सो इन दैट पर्टिकुलर एग्जाम्पल और सिमिलर टू दिस पर्टिकुलर एग्जाम्पल यू कैन लिमिट द रेंज ऑफ द जनरेशन ऑफ द रेंडम नंबर सो वी कैन जनरेट the sequence of the random number by dividing it with a particular range divisor. This is an example where we want that our random number generator should, should divide the uh, number with uh, 20. So when you divide it, the generated random numbers with 20, it will generate a range and that ranges from 0 to 19. And if we add 0 to 19 with 11, then it's mean that your range of generated number, random numbers will be from 11 to 20. Kaise? Ki agar ye 0 generate karega, to aap usme 11 add karenge, to output will be 11. Or if it generates uh, the number uh, 19 okay if it uh, generates the number 19 and we will add 19 so it's mean that it will generate a number from uh, 19 plus 11 will be 30 so it will generate from 11 to 20 okay it will generate from the range 11 to 30 here yeah. rolling a dice Another example, dice kya? Just Ludo. Okay, you have given it to Ludo, so what happens in that? The uh, dot jo hai, usko aap roll karte hai. The dot can have a value from 1 to 6. So if you want that your dot is simulated with the help of generating the random numbers, suppose you want to develop uh, a Ludo game, Ludo game का प्रोग्राम लिखना चाह रहे हैं और आप चाहते हैं कि वो रैंडमली वो डाइस रोल करे, so you can use this particular routine. This routine will generate the random number. When you divide it from the range six, the output will be from zero to five. And when you add one, then the range will become from not zero because zero कभी नहीं आएगा क्योंकि you add one, so the range will be from one to six. जब 5 आएगा तो उसमें ऐड होके 6 हो जाएगा और जब 0 आएगा तो उसमें ऐड होके 1 हो जाएगा सो दिस रैंडम नंबर विल रूटीन विल जनरेट द रैंडम नंबर फ्रॉम 1 टू 6 ओके सो वी हैव सीन द रैंडम नंबर जनरेटर द रैंड फंक्शन जनरेट्स द सेम सेट ऑफ रैंडम नंबर्स एवरी टाइम वी रन द प्रोग्राम to generate a set of random numbers, we can use a random generator function called unsigned integer. आप इसको call कर सकते हैं। But suppose every time you call this function, you will notice that it will generate the same sequence of random numbers. If you want that it should not generate the same sequence of random number, uske liye you can call, you can just set the randomization. And how can you set the randomization? Aap is function ko s rand. Is function ko aap ek dafa call karve. S rand is a pseudo random number seeded by the input. Aap isko koi bhi ek input provide karde. 
और जब आप उसको एक इनपुट प्रोवाइड करेंगे तो उस इनपुट से रिलेटेड ये हमेशा वही सीक्वेंस ऑफ रैंडम नंबर्स जो है वो जनरेट करेगा बट इफ यू वांट कि एवरी टाइम इट शुड जनरेट अ डिफरेंट सीक्वेंस ऑफ रैंडम नंबर्स सो व्हाट यू कैन डू आप इसकी जो एस uh, रेड है इनिशियलाइजेशन है वो एक डिफरेंट वेरिएबल्स के थ्रू कर सकते हैं सो आई विल शो यू हाउ कैन यू डू दैट इन दिस पर्टिकुलर एग्जाम्पल we want that the random number should be generated but we want that every time the random number we generate every time we call this function it should generate the different sequence of random numbers ab yahan par it will generate random numbers four times so if you don't use this initialization method it will generate the same random number any time or as many times as you call this particular random number generator by rand function rand function so how can we solve this problem we have solved this problem by calling another function which is a randomized the generator randomized the generator means humne isko ek seed provide karni hai and that seed is num hum keyboard se ek number enter karenge this number will be passed on to the system as a seed it will reset the system and it will reset the system to a new sequence of random number generation lekin ek baat ka khayal rakhiyega ki aap jitni dafa same input denge utni dafa wohi same sequence of random number jo hai wo generate hoga it is also very useful i will show you sometimes uh, uh, in future by showing you the different values that we can generate with the help of the seeded random numbers controlled and seeded random number generation when we run this particular slide we can see that every time this random number generator is called it generates the same sequence it generates 5 first time second time 3 3 5 4 2 okay and uh, it is the range because uh, we have used here 6 so we have uh, used the modulus uh, operator so we are getting the result but we are getting the same result so if we do not want to have the same result then what you can do you can use the s rand seed number and this is an exercise for you you should try this exercise and should generate a sequence that should be different than that of the sequence that i have provided here this is a very very important concept that is uh, used in the computer science when you develop the algorithms algorithms you can develop the algorithms by providing the procedures which are the recursive procedure or you can develop the functions which are the recursive function so what is recursion first of all a procedure is said to be a recursive procedure if it calls back to itself similarly if a function is called back to itself it is called recursive function we have learned so far to call different functions humne a se function b ko call kiya b se c ko call kar sakte hain c se d ko call kar sakte hain we can call any function but c also provides you a very powerful feature and that powerful feature means ke you can call the same function staying in that particular function okay means you can call back the same function while you are in that particular function so if a function call back to itself it is called a recursive function c language allows you to have this recursion where are whereas some other languages like fortran do not allow you to call back the function so in order to understand the concept we needed to know what happens when a function call to another function and what happens when the function call back to itself okay iske liye i would like to show you the example 
okay students please be attentive and be careful it's a very very important concept that I'm going to explain it to you okay here I've given the example of four function function a function B function C and function D आप देखिए यहाँ पे कि function B function A when it reaches to for example an address of 130 it calls a function B when the function B reaches to an address of 210 it calls function C when the function C reaches to this particular address it calls function D so what happens when a function calls to another function okay suppose function a calls a function b this function a has called function b here the address of the next statement 40 is saved somewhere in the computer this is called a structure i will talk about this structure later on but at this stage i will just would like to tell you the address of the next instruction logically the next instruction that should be executed is instruction ka address jo hai wo save ho jata hai and the control is transferred to the function b okay now what will happen when it will execute this one this function calls function c so when the function b calls function c here the this address 220 is saved up here up the previous one last address was the 140 and this address is which is saved is the 220 which is above that function so what will happen here again see that uh, let us see what will happen the C function executed statement and reaches to a point here 340 and it calls a function D so what will happen here the address 350 is saved here okay and the control is transferred to this one so what will happen this function will execute and it will execute the last statement return so what is what will happen when it, when it will execute this statement where the control should go whether the control should go here or the control should go here or the control should go here okay this we need to know okay where this control will go okay let us see when now we have got these three addresses here we want to see ke, uh, control you have okay statement with 350 with 220 with yeah 140 with okay so the control will go back to the this statement the last one when the function D returns address which was top of our structure is re retrieved from the structure and the control transfers back so what will happen next next me kya this address should be retrieved and the control jab hum isko execute karenge when this function C will execute return then this address should be retrieved and the function should go back here and we see yes it happens when the function C returns the control the address of 220 is retrieved from the top of the structure and control backs there okay so this is logic that when this return statement should execute this address should come out and the control should go from this point to the address 140 so let us see when the function b returns execute the return statement and as soon as it executes a return statement here the address of 140 which was saved at the bottom of the structure here comes out and the control is transferred back here and when we execute this return statement then the function result should go control should go to the main program first time jahan se aapne a ko call kiya tha so students aapne dekha ke control jo hai wo ek reverse order ke andar wapis aata hai jab d ne return kiya to d ko call kiya tha c ne 
سی نے کال کیا تھا ڈی کو تو جب ڈی نے ریٹرن کیا تو کنٹرول آخری کاونگ فنکشن کو واپس کیا اور یہاں پہ جب اس نے ریٹرن کیا تو دس فنکشن واز کالڈ بائی بی فنکشن اور جس جگہ سے کال ہوا تھا کنٹرول اس جگہ پہ آ گیا اینڈ جب اس نے ایگزیکیوٹ کیا ریٹرن تو دس فنکشن بی واز کالڈ بائی دی فنکشن اے اور دی نیکسٹ ایڈریس جو تھا وہ اس کا یہ تھا سو دس از دی پروسیجر تھرو وچ دی وین وی کال ون فنکشن and then we call another function within the function and another function within the function okay let us see what happens a recursive function call back to itself up the function you hey up a function said to say function could call me got a but okay the function is calling back to itself so to avoid indefinite callback there exist a criteria that is called a base criteria or called base case at which the function does not call back to itself recursion ke andar hum keh rahe hain ki a function call back to itself a function call back to itself so agar function ne apne aap ko call karna hai to should it be calling back to itself indefinitely یہ تو ایک انڈیفینیٹ لوپ بن جائے گا سو ان آرڈر ٹو اسٹاپ دی فنکشن کالنگ بیک ٹو اٹ سیلف انڈیفینیٹلی وٹ وی ڈو وی ڈیفائن اے کرائیٹیریا وچ از کالڈ اے بیس کرائیٹیریا اور وچ از کالڈ اے بیس کیس ایٹ وچ دا فنکشن ڈز ناٹ کال بیک ٹو اٹ سیلف اور ایوری ٹائم دا فنکشن کال بیک ٹو اٹ سیلف اٹ از کلوزر ٹو دی بیس کرائیٹیریا کیا مطلب ہوا اس کا کہ یو آر کمنگ کلوزر ٹو دا سولیوشن یو آر کالنگ بیک ٹو دا فنکشن دا فنکشن از کالنگ بیک ٹو اٹ سیلف اینڈ ایوری ٹائم اٹ از کالنگ بیک ٹو اٹ سیلف اٹ از کلوزر ٹو دا بیس کرائیٹیریا اور بیس کرائیٹیریا از اے کرائیٹیریا ایٹ وچ دا فنکشن ول ناٹ کال بیک ٹو اٹ سیلف سو وٹ ول ہیپن ہیئر اے فنکشن لانچ از اے فریش کاپی آف اٹ سیلف ٹو ورک آن اے اسمالر پرابلم means that every time the function call back to itself it has got a fresh copy of the definition okay this is related to a recursive call or recursive step because as a yeah kid as a eight function job kisi do say function go call karta hai to us function ki ek fresh copy joe hai copy means definition ki a copy statements ki copy aap ko receive hoti hai system go receive hoti hai to execute the function بالکل ایسے ہی وین اے فنکشن کال بیک ٹو اٹ سیلف اس کی ایک فریش کاپی جو ہے اس کی فنکشن کی ریٹریو ہوتی ہے دی فنکشن کیپس ڈیوائڈنگ ایچ نیو سب پروگرام ان ٹو ٹو کانسیپچل پیسز ایک پیس جس میں کہ یہ کال بیک کر رہا ہے اپنے آپ کو اور دوسرا پیس جس میں کہ یہ کال بیک نہیں کر رہا اور ان دونوں کے درمیان کیا چیز ہے بیس کرائیٹیریا ہے ایک بیس کرائیٹیریا جب یہ اپنے آپ کو کال بیک کرنا چھوڑ دے گا تو پھر اس کو ایٹ ڈیٹ پرٹیکولر اسٹیج وٹ اٹ شوڈ ڈو دی فنکشن دس ریکگنائز دا بیس کیس اینڈ ریٹرن آ ریزلٹ ٹو دی پریویس کاپی آف دی وے اپ وہ جو ایک فنکشن اے کال کرتا ہے بی کو تو پیرامیٹر سیو کرتا ہے ایڈریس سیو کرتا ہے تو جب یہ کال بیک کرنا اسٹاپ کر دیتا ہے اپنے آپ کو اور بیس کرائیٹیریا کے بعد اب یہ کیا کرتا ہے کہ وہ تمام سیو کی ہوئی کاپی اسٹرکچر کے اندر موجود ہیں اس کو ون بائی ون ریکور کرتا ہے ٹاپ سے انٹل دی اسٹرکچر از ایم ٹی اس طریقے سے ریکرسو فنکشن مینٹین کرتا ہے کہ ہاؤ مینی ٹائم دس فنکشن ہیز کال بیک ٹو اٹ سیلف اس کی ایک بڑی اچھی ایگزامپل ہے وچ از فیکٹوریل آف اے نمبر دس از فیکٹوریل آف اے فائیو and uh, when we calculate the factorial of 5 we say that 5 factorial is equal to 5 multiplied by the 4 factorial then 4 factorial is equal to 4 multiplied by the 3 factorial and 3 factorial is equal to 3 multiplied by 2 factorial and 2 factorial is equal to 2 multiplied by 1 factorial and 1 factorial is equal to 1 multiplied by 0 factorial but 0 factorial is equal to 1 so this is the base criteria ہم zero factorial میں یہ نہیں کہتے کہ zero multiply by minus one factorial no we say that zero factorial is equal to one means کہ اب calling back نہیں کر رہے at zero factorial system returns a value equal to one okay so اب کیا ہوگا now 
you can compute 1 factorial because you have got the value of the 0 factorial which is 1. So you multiply 1 multiply by 0 factorial which is equal to 1 here. So your answer is 1. And then you can calculate 2 factorial. Now you have got the value of 1 factorial. You put the value of 1 factorial which is 1. So 2 multiplied by 1. Now you have got the value of 2 factorial which is equal to 2 and that you can return back to the 3 factorial because 3 factorial is equal to 3 multiplied by 2 factorial and uh, the value of 2 factorial is equal to 2 so this value is multiplied here now you have got the value of the factorial 3 then you can find the value of factorial 4 which is 4 multiplied by this return value 6 which is the value of the 3 factorial you multiply you got the value equal to 24 and then this 24 multiplied by 5 because 24 is equal to the 4 factorial, you got the answer. And the final value is equal to 120. So, this procedure is basically a recursive procedure, which is calling back to itself in order to solve the problem. Okay? So, let us see how this particular uh, program is implemented. This recursion is implemented here. Or uh, here we can <coughs> see that this is the main program. Main program is calling the factorial function, which is factorial num. Suppose we say that num is equal to 5. So we call this factorial function. And then we say that if n is less than or equal to 1, yeah, we can say that usko precisely usi example ko saamne rakhne ke liye, we can say that if n equal, equal to 0, then return 1. Okay, factorial 0 is equal to 1. But because we have to do this, we have to do this, and we have to do this, and we have to do this, so we have to do this, we have to do this, if n is less than or equal to 1, so we have to do this, and we have to do this, and we have to do this, and we have to do this. If it is less than or equal to 1 or if it is equal to 1, it will return 1, which is the base case, else the function calls back to itself by saying that it is the value is equal to n multiplied by n minus 1 factorial. So if the value of n was 5, so it will return 5 multiplied by the 4 factorial. It is called again with the value equal to 4, n minus 1 is 4. Now it will not 0, so it will say 4 multiplied by the 3 factorial. Then call back again, it will say 3 multiplied by 2 factorial, then 2 multiplied by 1 factorial, then 1 multiplied by 0 factorial. So this is something that we have demonstrated here. And this we have implemented in this particular program. Now, <clears throat> I would like to show you that how this program should work. The same example that I have used in the demonstration of calling a function A and calling function b by function a, then function c by function b, then function d by function c. Similarly, here the function is calling back to itself. This is the same factorial function that I have just given you the code here in the previous example here. I am just using this particular code here, okay, in the next example. Now, suppose I want to compute the value of 5 and I have passed it on from the main program, the value of n is equal to 5. So factorial of 5 is called. What will happen? When we call the factorial of 5, n is equal to 5 and it call back by factorial of 4. Yaha par aapne n ki value the 5. Okay. The value of n that you provided from the main program was 5. It come up here and here you say that it is 5 multiplied by the 4 factorial. So n is equal to 5 and factorial is equal to 4. This n is equal to 5 and factorial is equal to 4. And the address of this statement, suppose the address of this statement is 1200, is saved here in the structure. And the control comes back. And now the value of factorial 4 is computed. It say that n is equal to 4 or you call back the function with the value of n is equal to 3 and once again this address of 1200 is saved here into the structure. Similarly you call factorial 3 that say call the same function with factorial 2 and value is saved here on the structure. n is 1 value is saved onto the structure. n is 0 the value is saved onto the structure. Okay. <coughs> When this function is called again, 
when factor n is equal to 0, so it should return 1. So what will happen? What is going to happen now? Now you are not calling back to itself, you have stopped calling the function, your structure is there full and this time you are not calling back here. So when this return statement execute, it say return 1, what will happen? This 1200 address, this statement is executed and the value of this n was 1. So this factorial 0 returns 1, this address means it's 1 multiplied by factorial 0 is 1 and what will happen next time? n is 1, it returns 1, so 1 multiplied by 1, it will return 1. As soon as it returns 1 here, the next statement comes out of the stack. Now it says that n is equal to 2, so it will say that 2 multiplied by the return value was 1, this is 2, it is executed. When this statement is executed, return, the next statement comes out of the structure. Now n is equal to 3, okay, the value of the return was 2, it is 6. Next, this comes out, n is equal to 4, our value is returned by 6, is 24, it is returned, and the next the n is equal to 5, so you have 5 multiplied by, sorry, it is not 25, it is 24. 5 multiplied by 24 is equal to 120. Okay, so in this way we have seen that how this recursive function executes. Okay, <clears throat> important thing that we need to define is the base case. That is very, very important. The base case corresponding to the case in which you know the answer and the function does not call back to itself or can easily compute the answer. Either you know the answer or you can compute the answer. So you are not required to call back the function. If we can provide the base case to a particular function, then we can write down lot of recursive functions and lot of recursive algorithms. And that I expect from you and you can do that. I just would like to give you another example. Here, suppose I want to compute the area. I want to compute the area. So I say that what should be the base case? The base case is very simple. When n is equal to 1, the area is equal to 1 multiplied by 1 or 1 by 1 means this 1 is area is equal to 1. But if the recursive step kya hai? When the value of n, suppose here the value of n, then how can we compute the area? So we can say area is equal to n means, suppose hum yaan se dekh hai, area is equal to n means this is n from this point to this point plus this area. How much this area is? This is n minus 1. Because this one you have included there. So you have got n plus you have got n minus 1 plus the area of n minus 1. If this is n, so this is n minus 1. Yaan se yaan tak, this is n minus 1. So area of n is equal to this n, this n minus 1 plus the area of n minus 1. Similarly, you can find if n is equal to 2, you can say this is equal to 2 plus n minus 1 is 1. So 2 plus 1, 3 plus area of n minus 1 which is 1. So this is 4. So 2 into 2 is equal to area is equal to 4. So we have very intelligently converted a problem into a recursive problem. And I will show you a few more examples in the next lecture where we can convert it to that. So this is the implementation of this. If we say if n is equal to 1, return 1, else return n plus n minus 1, area of n minus 1. So this recursive function should provide you the area of any square. Exercises of uh, recursive function your textbook and some reference books will cont uh, contain number of examples. So please go through those examples, try these examples and try to have some practice in the C++ Visual Studio or Visual C environment 
ان پروگرامز کو ان ایگزیمپلز کو کوڈ کریں ان کو رن کریں اس سے پریکٹس کریں بیکاز ریکرشن از اے ویری ویری امپورٹنٹ کانسیپٹ آف یور کمپیوٹر پروگرامنگ خاص طور پہ سی لینگویج provides you the facility to call back the function, provide you the recursion facility or recursive call facility. So you must utilize the power of the C language and must know and should know how you can solve different algorithm using the recursive technique. So with this, I have concluded the topic of today. So inshallah in the next lecture I'll be giving you some hands-on exercises and some hands-on practice demonstration till then Khuda Hafiz Allah Nikibad.